I'm just so fortunate that we're still able to kind of be back in the area that we grew up with. It was quiet and peaceful and, and it was close to every, everything that you ever wanted in life. So, so much laughter, uh, so many great memories. And I think that is the biggest thing that I remember in my childhood is the laughter. We are standing on the Minnesota River bottoms where the Paul family started farming and we're down here for approximately 50 years. What's unique about this property is that we are standing on property that's right next to the Minnesota River in Bloomington, Minnesota. So we're right in the middle of the city, yet this was where a big farm had its empire through the years. This is a picture of the farm, what it looked like. And so this is the river bottom, obviously the river right here. And this is where the farm house was. This was the house that uh, John built and Leo and Myrtle purchased this property in 1935. And they farmed here um, until 1985-ish. You couldn't find better, better agricultural ground in the country. It's definitely not around in, in this state. With the, the flooding that occurred over the years and the, and the silty loam uh, textured soils uh, in, the, in the valleys, it trapped the heat in there so it allowed us to get our crops to market a lot quicker than anybody else. That's a really important piece is to have your corn ready even three, four, five days earlier than other farmers because the price of that is significantly more. This was valuable not only from a heritage and a livelihood perspective, but financially as well. They never really considered themselves poor. They didn't have a lot of money, but they always had a lot of food. In hard times, we always had food, and that was the advantage of farming. This is my uh, grandpa Leo and my grandma Myrtle, and this is their wedding picture in 1933. They had six children, um, five of which grew through adulthood and they all farmed the fields. They would farm in the morning, walk to school, and then come back and farm some more. Back in the day when I was, uh, when I was a kid, my, my dad raised a lot of onions, a lot of potatoes, um, sweet corn, cukes and peppers, and you know hard squashes like acorn, buttercup, butternut. At times I thought it was kind of intense, to be honest with you. Um, it was a lot of chaos at times, you know, uh, a lot of trucks and tractors and trailers and uh, produce going up and down this uh, property. And I think about this road. This road provided a lot of travel for people, for all of us to spend time together. And the river, you know, you think of water as kind of healing and the water um, really is what helped to this farm. That, that's why they, I was told they farmed near the river because it was a source of water too. You know, if it, it was drought, you had a water source. Every time it would flood and it would get up above house level, they would all have to kind of move out for that length of time. And it, it changed the whole landscape of the property down there. You know, when you saw tree, tree lines and fields and that kind of thing, all of a sudden it was nothing but a, a big lake. They actually had to take out doors, windows, their furniture. They had to take everything out. And because this was their livelihood, they had to come back and move right back in. You'd always gauge the, the floodwaters by the, the lake bridge. If the lake bridge started getting water on it, that meant it was getting close to grandma's top step. You can see some of this rock in the picture. And a lot of this rock obviously is natural, but the city of Bloomington would often come down with uh, big dump loads of cement that they would be doing different projects. They needed to get rid of the cement. And we needed the cement for erosion control on the side of the bank. So they would come down frequently and be dumping all these uh, big truck loads of cement along the riverbank to help protect the riverbank because it was certainly eroding. Our grandpa was known as the wheelchair farmer of Bloomington. Our grandpa, Leo, was shot by a deer hunter. It's pretty crazy. I mean, just to think that he, he was able to run his farm from his wheelchair. And my grandmother, um, just, they were definitely the pioneer people of, of Bloomington, for sure. 
she used to just be so proud of her kids. That's all she used to say. So those kids were so little and they had to be so responsible because, you know, their father could not get out of the chair. He, he could direct orders and things, but he couldn't do the things. And I'm sure that was frustrating for him, too. And so there was a lot of pressure. I mean, it was a lot of hard work uh, on the farm. Of course, everybody thinks their grandmas are the best. But I'm telling you, this grandma was the best. I mean, we, you would be working down there, and uh, she'd holler out the window, boys, I got uh, soups ready, or boys, I got rolls ready for you. It didn't matter if you had three guys working or ten guys working, she'd have enough food for everybody. Grandma uh, Myrtle always had food ready for everyone. Um, she was an absolute remarkable lady, um, strongest lady, lived till 93. She had a tough life, but she had a rewarding life too. Grandma. <laughs> Both my grandpa and grandma um, had a lot of pride, and this was their livelihood. This is all that they knew, and this is how they made their money and how they were able to raise their, their children. So it was very important to them to continue this. When I think of this property here today, that's what I think of. I think of um, how humble they were, how hardworking they were. DNR was purchasing all of this property, expanding the trail system along the whole Minnesota River for everyone to enjoy, not just the few families that were down here. Um, and that happened middle of the 1980s. I would say take care of it, because uh, although our name isn't physically on a plaque down here, it was well cared for and loved and nurtured. Um, by that family for over 50 years down here. So take care of it. <laughs>